And please welcome the speaker, Ivan Ma. Hey, Zhou-san, good morning. Uh, just so happened, uh, yeah, the language that I use, okay, uh, or I have to speak English in this section. So, any English speakers in here? So, can anyone actually uh, not listening to hearing uh, Cantonese? Gondongwa? Yingman? No preference. <laughs> any preference? Organizers, what's to, what do you want? Any? Okay, uh, let's speak uh, in English, just uh, for the preference, uh, if uh, anyone from other countries coming in. So today this session is about the, uh, uh, from my SQL perspective, is to talk about, okay, on cloud, how we actually can run applications with reliabilities and also particularly people interested in Kubernetes which is orchestrations of the services, right? So uh, today, we'll go over the topics where uh, just the overview first, and as well as how or what people actually use in MySQL for the deployment. And we also will debrief about the operators. And uh, operators just like a person's at the back. Uh, when we talk about operators at the back, meaning the instructions giving the operator and then do something else. So uh, with Kubernetes, Okay, many other services are running, but they are all like independence. So someone actually at the back should take care of how those services to be operated together and orchestrated together. That's why uh, we kind of okay, provide this like MySQL operators to coordinate this MySQL services, okay, together to provide how we manage the MySQL server. What kind of management we are talking about? HA. If there are not just one server is running, then we need to know about, okay, which server is up and run. And also to provision, not just one. We have to provision more than one server at a time, meaning when one is actually getting, yeah, crash and the other actually pick up the service, as well as the other actually the client application connecting to. This server set, okay, as a cluster, how these connections can actually make transparency to the server behind the scene. And as well as, as the operator or the backend, uh, we need to manage the schedules, how we do backup, right? Like, yeah, you have the data, we need to do backup. So that's what operator means, okay, at the back. That's today, we will go over this, and also it has some other uh, uh, debrief uh, about the uh, heat wave, okay, which we introduce the uh, machine learning. So basically, uh, cloud native, uh, it is a very hot topic, and uh, people, when looking at this approach, uh, people look, uh, will look at, like, yeah, in the past, so-called SOA, service-oriented architectures, and all this, yeah, people, how those actually things talk to each other, right? Uh, yeah, as the microservices, how those services can coordinate and making API calls to the others. So very common, it's like, okay, whether we build a queue or messaging platform like Kafka or some other things in between and so they can actually talk to, to each other. And or this is like RESTful API. So applications will develop in this way. <clears throat> so on cloud, so the applications, the characteristic is like to use or leverage those services available on cloud, right? Services can, can be any means. Uh, the virtual machines, or even point and click, and then to have the, my, uh, to have the database running. Uh, MySQL just up and run, and you want the uh, superpower of MySQL just point and click, and HA capability, heat wave capabilities. And as well as if you need some visualization tools uh, on the Oracle or the cloud, we are talking about how to visualize the data using analytic cloud, Oracle A OAC. And we're likely as today, people try to make it more loosely coupled and very independent service, talking about container, right? Container is like, okay, in the past, talking about just VM, all the OS and hypervisors all in one stack. That's just very heavy. So with the container, it's more lightweight and things can happen instant, right? So that's why container is more popular. 
And it is not you just to create a container, master node, or worker nodes, but you likely you may want some others just to create the deployed YAML or ham chart and the, the service is just up and running and taking the leverage of the backend or the platform resources and to have your just the service to up and run. So with the MySQL, what kind of the things on the clouds we are talking about? So very often people just develop their application and connects to the so-called MySQL and build, and build, build, build by themselves. So they deploy on the cloud, okay, with just easy to a virtual machine or the compute, they just deploy on its own, okay? So the next question is, is this a standalone or this require a more uh, reliabilities and also security? So people has to manage by themselves using whatever, okay, this is, can be like Martin's uh, slave or we, today we talk about the uh, source and replicas. And people like to have like uh, building the image which they can deploy easily and provisions that kind of VM, okay, as the full stack, uh, all the OS and all the patches. You manage yourself, and from time to time, you have to patch it, okay? No matter, this is like, okay, your upgrade or because of the security vulnerability issues. So from time to time, every few months, you have to patch it. And what next? So getting to the next step, people like to have just simple, easy, managed way. Uh, to point and click and getting the service up and running. So uh, on the cloud, this can be my SQL database service. Okay, we have the heat wave. Heat wave is just like okay a super power engines to back the my SQL. From the end user point of view or the developer point of view, we just use the my SQL. It's just a whole set. Okay. We just talk to the protocol and sending the SQL, okay? Requiring the data, select the data. But the way is, this is not just simple MySQL. It's actually the components from the frontier, MySQL, and the backend in-memory clusters of many machines with a large number of memory, okay? A large amount of memory and putting the data in there and with the intelligence of SQL processing, so when data is in the MySQL, data is actually pushing to the backend heat wave engines where it has many machines, okay, putting the data in different matters, different formats, okay. For traditional data where we run, it is quite likely is OLTP is row-based, row-based data, and the data is stored just row by row. But for data actually, require analytics, okay, we likely, we process the data in a large batch of data, many, many rows, and interested in a few columns, okay? We interest just on the amount, the revenues, the years, not the particular who, who this is. So we interest is just in column base. That's why the backend heat wave in-memory engines, we have this like column hybrid mode base, data format and storing in the in memory and process in a very high efficient okay manner and taking like even uh, 100 and 1000 times faster than ever it also has the capabilities to build in the machine learning capabilities which we'll talk about this okay at the yeah last part of it and now what about when we talk about in on the cloud the container like kubernetes all this way so on the cloud people do it with, with the vm and people can create a so-called container using just Docker image. My SQL, we have Docker image provided on, yeah, you can just yeah, download and then just install and then just up and running. The My SQL Docker image is just the server. And uh, there is also the My SQL router Docker image that you point to it as like the middleware, which can actually find out who is active and run. And this is like you need to provision just the same standalone server. And externally, what people do is to create more than just one server and have the HA capability. And applications connect externally using whatever means, load balancers, routers, or whatever in container worlds, we talk about external names. So this is like Docker way. And there's also another 
when we talk about InnoDB cluster with, the, uh, with our MySQL operator, which uh, we'll cover in a minute. So as the MySQL deployment, just we mentioned uh, yeah, earlier, deploy standalone without HA, or people traditionally or still yeah, at this moment using replication, source and replicas. But what about the uh, applications connecting to the server, which the source is down and the other server is just up, and how you switch from one server to the others? Virtual IP? And you have to find a solution, whatever this is, like keep alive or pacemaker on Linux, there should be some kind of external means to run to make sure the VIP will know what the service is up and running. Okay? The server, maybe the OS is up, but the, your MySQL is down. So what is it? So there should be mechanism how you address okay, the so-called VIP failover. That's what the replications people have been doing this. And thereafter, because so many not uh, automatic, we build another so-called InnoDB cluster as the uh, architectures to handle these automations. Okay, the server, when it is provisioned, yeah, it knows who is up and run, and there is also middleware where it provides transparent access for the client applications to find out where to go for the data. So that's the MySQL router and with the InnoDB cluster. Okay, and thereafter, people asking for, it is not just one single data center. Okay, you might have multiple data center, here and there, Hong Kong, Singapore, yeah, in China, Beijing. So they are quite distant. And when we are talking about cluster, it has to be like very nearby. It's the next machine kind of, okay, latency is very, very, very low. So when data is actually sitting on one server, the data will instantly to send to the others. And the latency of the network in this way will actually put into the the, the impacts to your applications, okay, the feeling for the, for the end users, right? The end users, the customer experience is like, okay, when you hit a click, data is actually sent into the data on the server one, but as well as server two and three. So that's why the latency for this so-called cluster must be very sensitive to the, to the network latencies. It has to be very low latency network and likely a single data center. So when we talk about, okay, further on, the data center is not just one single, but also the other regions. Then it has to be one cluster here, the other cluster there. And we talk uh, about this using cluster sets. And that should be the asynchronous replication between cluster. And cluster has the known state of what it is and how it works. And each cluster has its own metadata. So when replication, just to turn on, it mess up its all internal data. That's why we have to use so-called the cluster set mechanisms to replicate data, to exclude certain metadata, as well as when the switching between the server from one cluster to the other cluster. There are like so-called transactions where it may have internal manipulation data which might not affect the others. We have to clean this up. That's why, that's we, why we have this cluster set and in place. So we have this like InnoDB cluster on cloud using MySQL operators. So here's just a, a simple idea of replication in traditional way. So whatever, if you look at this, meaning when data, traditional data sending to the uh, one server, it will send automatically to the, the other side. So that's the replications, right? So thereafter, uh, we want to automate a little bit, okay, using the uh, so-called replica set. It is quite automatic and very simple, and you do not need to configure a lot using the my.cnf configurations, but actually just command level and SQL level, and this actually helpful for people to build, okay, the replications across servers. So in this way, you can actually clone the server in incremental or using a clone, meaning to recreate from from, from new server, okay? So meaning the server has all data and the other has nothing. And you do not need to do backup and restore, but the clone method will do it for you automatically and like backup the data instantly from here and sending to the new server. That's the replica set and the cloning method. And of course, in ODB cluster. This is also true for cloning the server from server one to server two. It is simple. 
uh, just a few commands, and then you can clone the other server, and having this like server one, server two, server three, all in place, okay? And you can actually look at in the middle, we talk about the MySQL uh, routers, which is the middleware, and connecting the applications to the server. So on your cloud, and as a cloud native, you should have some way to connect to the server, okay? That's what we call the MySQL routers. And MySQL router is stateless, stateless. You can actually run A server, B server, C routers. So all these number one, two, three routers, doesn't matter which one you connect to, it knows the state of the backend uh, server sets. So here th there are two, and the two can actually sitting on the application side, may also, people may think, okay, server can actually quite static. Server can be quite static, and they put this, uh, the routers on the server as well, okay? So there are a couple of ways of doing this. But anyway, InnoDB cluster creation is quite uh, simple. So here's just a few steps, okay? So when we have this, we sh first of all, so create three instances. So once the three instances are up and running, we just use the port number, 3310, 3320, 3330. And all this, we, we create the data. And at the end, we have, of course, sort of the config file, uh, putting where the data is, and port number, and also about using GTID, and this is quite a very simple way. And once we have this start, and what we do is to configure the, the MySQL shell, and running the, this is the MySQL shell. And MySQL shell is the utility, it's like administrations, admin API, where we can use this to create and provision the InnoDB cluster, and it is just a few steps. So, we use this, the shell, and it connects to the server, and as well as to create this, okay, the cluster. And this shell uh, provides the uh, language uh, facilities, which can be Python, can be JavaScript. So there are a couple of ways you actually, instead of creating store procedure, but also to create JavaScripts to work on, okay, my SQL. Here, this is to configure, because there are some sort of the configuration which to enable the InnoDB clusters to be up and run. So by doing the config instance, it automatically detect and dictate what else you need to reconfigure. And there's actually, particularly in here, the depend dependency tracking as the right set. And then just to do this, and here, this is like to connect to it, and we can use this to create the InnoDB cluster. You can see, from here, once we do this, um, what we have is to create the cluster. So to create cluster, we define where the server is, the first connections, and also the, the network which you use to, for the data exchange. And then by doing so, all this actually create a cluster with just one instance. And all along, one instant cluster, and we attach the server two and server three. That's we add instance to the cluster. So this is quite simple, but it is you do it. Okay, you do it. This is like very manual. That's why coming along, when we talk about this, we have uh, some others like operators. Okay, and this is like cluster set as means to the, uh, uh, the DR uh, way where the data center one and two can be quite distant. And we use the cluster set to manage two cluster. And then this is quite automatic. The automatic, it means it's not single, okay, uh, point of failure. What the point is, all along this timeline with the MySQL, it is talking about always replication is point to point. Point to point is like single point of failure, okay, single point of failure. But talking about a cluster to a cluster, Cluster, there are multiple servers here. There are multiple servers there. If just point to point, a single server up and down will make this like the channel of data flow, yeah, disconnected. So what this cluster set, the replication channel is built, it is resilience. When one server on the source part is down, the source channel will switch to the other server active the active server, and all the way the other side the same way. When one server is receiving data, when this server is down, the other server will pick up the row to get the data. So this is all automatic. So you can see InnoDB cluster in this way 
it's quite mature, okay, for you to deploy one data center, multiple data centers. So going back to the operators, so operators and in Kubernetes where we have the services, the services is like we build the stateful set with indip uh, individuals uh, port, okay, and with the port, okay, running multiple container in it, okay, the server up and running for the like uh, server one, server two, and server three. So this is a zero one two, and there are also routers which the middleware can actually be multiple, can be one routers, can be two routers. It is so happened in the pictures we're talking about three routers. So the routers keep you the uh, resilience because no one knows what happens to the routers, right? But anyway, the servers, we can use the coop control or whatever to expose the servers, which can connect like etcd as the name service, okay, to this like router x, y, z. And all this actually automatic. So the application connects to this, it's just a name, just a name. It will find the right router and connects to the right server. So for the application, it's quite easy. Applications connects to this so-called name service. The name is just like, for example, my cluster, it's just a name. It's the external exposed name. So here, the operator, what it is, it is actually in uh, MySQL we built using Python, Python. Actually, in the old days, early days, uh, yeah, Kubernetes was built, actually since day one, it's built by Google, and they use Go language. And the version one of the uh, MySQL operator was using Go language. But this is like the next gen uh, MySQL operator we, we switched. We used Python, and the Python, because the way we have the My MySQL shell, which we include the Python support, that's why it is just quite native to us. And the port, has to be like something external to run, as what we, we talk about. Operators, it's just external, and some wants to handle some other jobs, right? Backup and provisions, and when some uh, stop and we have to actually make it up and running, we start it. So this is the operator job. That's why there is a container at the back to monitor the servers out there. So there's a port MySQL operator. We have the Docker image, which provision does. Okay, and install with all this like keep and run. And the framework that you use as the, like, uh, yeah, how to make instructions, okay, instructions to the operator, it built within like events. All these events is handled using the framework called KOPF, okay? So if you Google, you can see KOPF, how it, how it does. There are many simple examples how you send an event and how that Python can actually be invoked to execute when there is a provision for the new name type, and this actually can be handled easily using KOPF. So by doing so, the operators can be using the manifest, okay, to create all this like CLD. Yeah, what is CLD? Because in Kubernetes way, there are many servers, but we, we are building, we are creating a new name called InnoDB cluster, a new name, which is unknown to so-called the uh, Kubernetes. That's why CLD, we give it a name, uh, InnoDB cluster. Uh, we give it a name, backup schedule, backup profile. We give some names. That's why we can get these services, okay, to be invoked. Okay, and then also all these like specifications, what we, we, we try to give it how many instances for these specifications, the prospect others. So we apply the CLD and deploy the operators and deploy create the uh, you know, DB cluster. So Hamtrak is another way. So here, when we have the operator deploy, we can actually create this like as an example using Hamtrak and install this to a namespace, giving it a credential, uh, username, password, and network orders, and as well as, okay, whether you use any certificates, okay, for a server. Okay, in the old days, or at this time, all people, many people just to use the default, self-generate, self-generate certificate, okay, because a lot of things is encrypted, so we need the cert. The cert is not just server cert, but also CA cert. But just in mind, if we are creating kind of a more, sec a more like using certificate connections, then the CA cert across a server has to be the same. 
it is not server one using the CA1, server two using CA2. If we create individual orders independent, they will be CA1, CA2, CA3, right? So if we are building more consensus, okay, then we have to align and then put in your certificates into the server. Anyway, here is just an example with uh, the time limit. Uh, I try to put this here. First, uh, to deploy, we have the ham chart deploys the operators on the right hand side, and there is actually a resource out there. Once you define the repository, you should be able to find the operator and just to install the operator using ham install. Okay, as the community, you can just fill it to use it. So once you define this, you can actually find it up and running. So this is actually just executed and the operator is there. Okay, so it is up and running for the namespace. So what next is people trying to define the, yeah, the, my cluster, which is the InnoDB cluster. Operator is running, then we create this InnoDB cluster as just another namespace, my IC01. And once it is deployed in here, and it will be three server, and it has the one uh, routers up and running. So all this, you can see the port here is trying to provision, getting an image and create the data, and actually making them all this connecting together, okay, one server to the other servers. They connect them together. So have this, of course, yeah, given the time around like two minutes time. So you see around two minutes time, okay, in my machines, okay, on cloud actually. So uh, it is, they are up and running and connected together. So around two minutes time and we have this up and running and together with the routers because as mentioned earlier, this is not just the server. The operator has to manage the connections between the application as well as to connect to the server set. So it has the, op, uh, the routers as well. So, and there is some other means of the uh, name, which is the InnoDB cluster. So when we could control get IC, IC InnoDB cluster. So we have uh, other names. Okay, we know, okay, this IC InnoDB cluster has online three instances and also the routers has one and it's live up and running for two minutes. So here, so here's an example how to use, like for example, like Grafana's, okay, it is quite popular, uh, people using Grafana as the dashboard and maybe the applications. So. So we can actually use time chart and to deploy and add data source and create some external name, okay? Meaning external name from the uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, it means uh, you have to define a name within your context, okay, your namespace, and addressing somewhere else, okay? Instead of putting a fixed IP address to yours, it's using a name. So here, let's look at this. Okay, as just one example. So here defining the uh, Grafana YAML file and then to create this. And we have to create this uh, Grafana namespace as well as apply this just, just ago. Uh, we have the YAML file and apply it with the new namespace uh, Grafana. And the Grafana is just easy to deploy. Okay, for this example. So this one is apply is supposed to be up and running. So we have also the load balancers with external IP as the load balancer we can address to it. So once we have this, we can actually put up front here, we add the source. At the very beginning, uh, our InnoDB cluster has the IP address, which 10 blah, 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 blah. And with this, we can connect to the server and it is of course okay. But what happened is the IP address can be dynamic. What happened to the next time, okay, when the server restart, we have the another IP address. That's why better we have to manage this with the applications and deployment with the external name. That's why we may actually put in external name and mappings to another namespace by means of this, okay, the my cluster zero or my cluster as the routers and connecting to the server. That's why once we have the, this external name and the apply to the Grafana namespace 
And from this Grafana's, I'm talking about IP, we can remap it back to the name, and this can be uh, addressing to the right server. Okay, so as simple as that, and then we can actually build the, the uh, Grafana dashboard, and yeah, by having this, we can run the server, and we can have the data and retrieve, and also put in the graph. So this is just an example of creating this. But people also look at some other things, like, okay, what about PHP My and Min, very popular in the market, and managing the MySQL? This is also valid and true, and you can also use a ham chart. But uh, once again, on cloud, people may do it with uh, Kubernetes, but as well as some other means of like Terraform, right? So you can actually using Terraform to have your VM and deployment all step by step. Okay, this is just an example of using the PHP my admin, okay, and deployment. That's very easy, and Hamtrot install, and the, is install the PHP my admin first, uh, the repository. Once we have it, and we can define, again, the external name. But there is one thing here. It's like the, <coughs> the certificate, the cert, because the way, uh, by default, many times PHP might mean connecting using plain text. So uh, it is actually quite useful for you to do these validations okay, with the certificate. And the PHP Miami can connect to the MySQL server, not using plain text connections, but SSL connections. So be aware, and you can Google around and then find how these connections can be made and changed using Hamtrot and Grafana, uh, I mean PHP Miami. One is it's there, yeah, all these things deployed, and at the back, of course, the PHP Miami with the external IP, we can access to it, okay? So all this can be simply running, and you can actually have the PHP my admin have the external name connecting to the InnoDB cluster or even MySQL service on the cloud, and very native. And at the last part of it, the heat wave. The MDS with the two minutes, I want to just give it a brief. Uh, on OCI, you can actually single click having HA or standalone model or actually building the heat wave. So what heat wave is, is actually building for the OLTP applications, OLAP application analytics because the back end with the massive okay, in-memory capability and intelligence for SQL processing and also the data co uh, columnar hybrid storage mechanism that provide a very high speed performance of my SQL as well as the, well, uh, the, the way how it can enable the machine learning capabilities, okay? If you have questions, you can actually go to the booth, okay, which outside uh, we can talk about how it works and also show you the demos, okay? So, uh, thanks a lot, okay? This is uh, what today I share with everybody, thanks. Questions? Maybe the last one. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, the booth, uh, I'm all, always be there. Okay, thank you. <laughs>